Are you trying to figure out how to feel better about yourself? Just want some practical tips? Hi there, and welcome back to Ask Dr. Syra, the show where I answer your questions about spirituality, personal growth, and relationships. So today's question comes from Donna. Donna says, how do I increase my self-esteem? Practical tips, please. Very simple. How do I increase my self-esteem? Practical tips, please. Short question, big answer. Okay, I have so many ideas for this one. I have so many things I want to say, but I'll try to keep it really concise. So, if you want practical tips, the first thing I would say is notice your language. How do you talk about yourself? What kind of words do you use to describe yourself? Do you self-deprecate? Do you say, oh, I'm such an idiot? Do you um, let other people speak poorly about you in your presence? Language is so powerful. How we talk about ourselves and others, it determines the way that we see the world. Like it actually does. Um, there's a field called neuro-linguistic programming where they look at the words that you use and how those then affect what you notice, how you perceive, what opportunities that you see or don't see. There's, a, there's some really interesting science around this. So the first thing I would say is, what are the words? What are the words coming out of your mouth? What are the words that you're thinking when you think about yourself? If there's certain things that traditionally have been hard for you, like maybe you don't feel you're very, um, I don't know, maybe you feel, I'm just trying to think of something that maybe I could give you as an example. So, oh yeah, here's one, athletic. I don't, I don't think of myself as a very athletic person. And so when there's like <laughs> that picnic and people are throwing that Frisbee, I'm always like, no, I don't want to get involved. I'll just sit here with my book. And I, I have this story about how I'm not an athlete, right? Or I'm not athletic. Now, when I say that, every time I say that, it reinforces that belief about myself, that reality about myself. A few years ago, I started going to the gym uh, regularly, and suddenly I was becoming very athletic. And as far as having a strong body, being comfortable with hand-eye coordination, um, just being really more present and strong and flexible in my body. And so now I don't use that language about I'm not an athlete, right? I just don't say that anymore when people, when people are, when we're speaking about it, because it's not, I don't want that to be the truth. I want to feel alive and vibrant and strong, and that's what I associate with athletes. So you see, that's just a very small example of how our language determines how we see ourselves and how others see us. So that's the first thing. Practical tip, change your words. Use different words. Erase some of the words. That one. The next one is body posture and how you kind of how you carry yourself in the world, right? Um, because when you when you smile, like when you actually you can try it right now, when you smile, when you turn the corners of your lips up a message goes to your brain telling you i think you feel good right now and sometimes if you're lucky you'll get a nice dump of some good feeling hormones and you actually feel good so you know that that old advice like fake it till you make it is actually kind of true if you notice your body posture when you walk more confidently you feel more confident it's just how it is so owning your body owning your words um Presenting in the world as if you are already confident. And then the confidence starts to come because people treat you differently, right? I remember once I did this exercise with a client where we did a practice about going to meet a friend at a coffee shop. So just kind of asking, you know, come on in the room and show me how you're going to show up for that, for that coffee. And it was, you know, there's the, like the, the her kind of shy, introverted, uncomfortable posture. And then I asked her to lift her head, make eye contact, square her shoulders, chin level to the ground, and come in again. And the, the responder feels very different when you come in with confidence. Have you noticed that people who have low self-confidence often make other people uncomfortable, like they're uncomfortable to be around because they're not comfortable with themselves and so you don't really feel good around them either, right? So if you're starting to practice confidence, body, posture, eye contact, those things can be really helpful to, to, because other people will interact with you differently when you start doing those things. Now, somebody might say, well, that's not very authentic. That's not like, Dr. Syra, you always talk about being authentic. That's not authentic. Sure, I would think of it as I'm practicing a skill, 
right? I'm pra- I do want to become confident, and so I'm practicing confidence. I do want to become stronger, and so I'm lifting weights. I'm not strong yet, but I'm lifting weights to practice so that the, 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 the strength can come. Same way, okay? That's the second thing. The third thing, so I have four. I have language, body, posture, and two more. So the third one is doing something that you're really good at or something that you really, really enjoy. Simple. When you do things you're good at, you just feel better about yourself. When you do things that you enjoy, you just feel happier in general. So if you're in a situation where you're constantly put into an environment where you're failing, you will lose confidence. Your self-esteem will be affected by that. So, uh, for example, if you have a very difficult, intense job and you're often kind of on edge at work, well, then when you're not at work, Find ways to do things that you're good at or things that you enjoy to do. And those could be as simple as, um, you know, reading a book that if you like to read, it could be as simple as listening to music that you love that just relaxes you. Do things that make you feel good and or that you're good at. That's another way to increase self-esteem and confidence. The last one, and this is sometimes overlooked. It is sometimes overlooked because we like to think of ourselves as like independent islands all on our own, which we're not. Which, if you've been following me at all for any amount of time, you know, I always say we're social mammals. We are not these independent islands floating around. And so this, but this one often gets missed because we have this narrative of I have to do it all alone, is who are you surrounding yourself with? Making sure that the people around you are people who lift you up. People who celebrate you. People who see the potential and the vibrancy in you, rather than people who are critical and criticizing. Really, really important. Because it's hard enough to push back against your own self-doubt. It's doubly hard when now you also have to push against other people's comments and judgments around you. So maybe you, you develop kind of like a little nook of, you know, two or three people who you feel you can be with um, who just celebrate. They don't all have to be a group. Like it could be one person here, one person there. That's fine. Um, people who pump you up. When you leave those encounters, you feel better about yourself. You feel full. Spend time with those people. So those are the four things. Language, so what do you say? What are you allowing other people to say? How do you carry yourself, your body, your posture? Um, Doing something that you really enjoy or you're good at and making sure that you're surrounded by people who lift you up. Those are some practical tips on how to increase your self-esteem. And one last thing before I go, the word self-esteem, I think, can mean so many things. I think for a lot of us, it means like low self-confidence is often how it's kind of translated. But I, I want to break down that word esteem, right? So it's like, in what esteem do I hold myself? How do I see myself? Um, you can change that. You can change the way you see yourself. And you'll change the way you see yourself by doing things differently. Not just by thinking about doing things differently, but actually doing things differently. So those are my thoughts about how to increase the self-esteem. And I will see you next time. Bye.